Colonizing the Red Planet requires the brightest minds, the most advanced technology, and the sternest of wills to persevere through the many generations of work it would take to create a new home by terraforming Mars. So it's only natural that such an effort is spearheaded by a handful of wealthy corporations. We all know those totally focus on sustainability, and not short-term profits, right? You play as one of these corporations amid the terraforming effort alongside your friends. You may all share the goal of terraforming Mars, but you aren't allies. The world government offers generous funding to corporations that aid in the task of making the planet livable. And you want to ensure that you have the biggest slice of that pie. Terraforming Mars is a competitive engine building and card management game for 1-5 to five players where corporations have to find ways to generate a variety of resources to help terraform the planet. Oxygen, temperature, and oceans are the primary factors to forge a livable environment, but how you get there is up to you. It should come as no surprise that a heavier weight game such as Terraforming Mars would come packed with components, but it's still pretty impressive just how much is actually there. The massive board showing a large region of Mars is not only beautiful, but it uses its size and iconography in elegant ways to aid with the gameplay. Once you learn the basics, all of the small icons on the map itself and the sidebar are easy to make sense of at a glance. I particularly enjoy how the game incorporates its theme directly onto the board itself. A large thermometer represents the temperature tracker and the oxygen meter reminds me of an air tank gauge. The wards along the bottom of the board look like medals you would either pin to a vest or hang up in a display, and it all fits the theme really well. You get a massive number of unique cards, and while the card art is often criticized as being poor, I disagree. It's certainly on the simpler side, and some of it may even be edited stock photos, but it doesn't look bad by any means. Furthermore, despite having over 200 unique cards, it all conforms to a consistent style when compared card by card. That said, the cards are on the thinner side, so it's definitely a game you're going to want to sleeve. Terraforming Mars comes with a variety of simple cube tokens to be used as resources and markers. They're pretty generic, and they all have a manufacturing flaw with a chipped corner, which is a bit of a bummer. The box comes with a bunch of nice double-sided cardboard tiles that represent greenery and cities. There's also a handful of special and ocean tiles. The tiles are made out of pretty thick cardboard and hold up despite frequent use. You get 17 unique corporation cards to play as, a few reference cards, and of course a rulebook. The overall component quality is mixed, but the general look and feel of the game, once it's tabled, is great, and it has a strong table presence, especially once players start laying out their engines. You get a fair bargain of bits and bobs for the price, but it's the content that they represent that really makes the price worthwhile. You also get five thin player boards and a fancy first player token in the shape of Mars. The player boards are going to be my biggest complaint component wise. They visually look nice and are again consistent with the rest of the game's style, but they can be a pain in the butt during play. You pile all kinds of cubes on the player boards and use them to track very important elements of your production. It's very easy to accidentally bump or knock the cubes around and forget where they were. It's fine if you're careful, but frustrating when it happens. Some will disagree, but despite its weight, Terraforming Mars is not really a complicated game to learn. Everyone I've taught it to caught on within just a few turns, and that's largely thanks to the game's great internal logic. How actions function and what the cards do all run on a very consistent framework that melds the theme of the game and its mechanisms. Playing a power plant raises your power production, which in turn generates power, that is later converted into heat. Steel can be used to help pay for buildings, while titanium can help pay for space projects. The player board's subtle hinting with its layout pulls it together nicely. The biggest obstacle is learning all the iconography, but beyond that, it's smooth sailing. That makes the poor rulebook much more frustrating. Visually speaking, Terraforming Mars is a lot to take in, and looks far more intimidating than it actually is. Rather than dismiss that illusion, the rulebook makes it worse. Key information is spread over various pages in different places and none of the information is concise. It gives examples in an A, B, C, D, E type format, but in the middle of a paragraph in bolded letters, with the cards it's actually detailing at the bottom of the page. It's awkward and convoluted. There's too much information to just read the whole book and then play, 
you're definitely going to learn a bit by playing, but there will be a bunch of page flipping to figure out how to complete even a single turn. That said, the game does come with starter corporations and nice reference cards to help ease you in. If you go in knowing it's not as complicated as it looks, you may be able to parse it better. Terraforming Mars's mixture of mechanisms is difficult to distill into a reasonable amount of words that still do the game justice. It gives you a goal, Terraform Mars, then it opens up a warehouse full of tools and says have at it. Saying that there are many paths to victory is a gross understatement. Since every card is unique, no two games truly feel the same. The strategies that players use change and adapt, not just at the start of the game, but during it. This is especially true if you use the drafting variant, which you totally should. The engine building in Terraforming Mars is more than just forging a successful corporation. Watching what other players are doing is important to actually win. While the game isn't high on player interaction, what's there is pretty pivotal. Watching what strategies they pursue can and should impact your decisions. If someone is building a powerful engine, it's in your best interest to terraform the planet quickly and end the game. Yet if you're building a powerful engine yourself, you may want to draw it out instead. If a player is going heavy on placing greenery tiles, you can place cities in key locations to not only disrupt their plans, but gain free victory points from their tiles. Only a few milestones and awards can be claimed each game, and they all grant points. It's always a race to see who can claim which ones first. Cutting another player off from one can give you a nice advantage. Playing the draft variant adds another layer as you can hate draft cards that another player would want, in addition to what you need. Yet every one of these aspects feels elegant and natural, not forced or clumsy. Placing oceans, raising the temperature, and generating oxygen aren't just required to end the game, they contribute to your income while you play. Anytime you raise a parameter, your terraforming rating goes up. Terraforming rating doubles as a source of in-game victory points, but also income. In most point-focused games, the points largely don't matter until the game ends. The TR track is a clever one-two punch that opens up the gameplay in interesting ways. For one, players are incentivized to actually terraform the planet, and it also means you always have a secondary source of income regardless of your engine. As a corporation, you have several resources you need to produce depending on your strategy. Money, heat, steel, titanium, plants, and power. But you always have the planet's well-being in the back of your mind, not just to fill your own pockets, but to hinder the other players. Each terraforming parameter is finite. Once nine oceans are placed, no one else can place one, for example. Each one you place not only bumps up your own TR and income, but it's one less for the other players to take. Terraforming Mars carefully balances an interesting number of strategic factors without being overwhelming. Every turn, you're doing something meaningful, and staying engaged is easy because what the other players are doing matters, even if it doesn't affect you directly most of the time. The game's mechanisms meld well with the theme, your actions make sense within the context of the setting, and you really do feel like you're managing a mega corporation balancing production and profit with the task of terraforming the planet, while also trying to outpace your rivals and come out on top. Most of your actions are dictated through cards. Each round, you will end up with four new ones, but the catch is, you have to buy them first, then pay their actual cost to play them on your turn. Buying cards puts a unique decision space quite literally in your hands. It's not just a matter of which cards you can afford to play, but which ones you can afford to buy for your hand in the first place. That might not seem like a big deal, but many cards have requirements, such as the planet having a specific level of oxygen. This means that even in the early game, you need to make long-term decisions. What do you need now, and what do you need in the mid to late game, and how much of either can you afford to put money toward any given turn? It adds a layer of depth and engagement that you would never have if you simply drew four cards to keep each turn, and it's brilliant. It's even more important when drafting, as you can draft cards you have no intention of buying that you know another player would want. Building a corporate engine is a big part of Terraforming Mars. There are several resources that can be generated, many of which can have additional uses with specific cards. Mega credits are obviously always important, but steel can be used to help pay for buildings, while titanium can help pay for space cards. Power has a bunch of utility with various cards, but it's also turned into heat during the production phase. Heat can be converted into temperature to terraform the planet, 
while plants can be turned into greenery tiles. Building up your corporation continually grants you more and more options as the game progresses. Early rounds might consist of only a few moves per player, while the later rounds have players taking actions in the double digits. Yet each player only gets two actions at a time before the next player's turn, so the game proceeds smoothly with minimal downtime from the game itself. While many of the cards offer one-time effects, several others offer you additional actions that can be used once per round that can really help you round out a winning strategy. For example, Development Center allows you to trade in 4 power to draw a card. Others, like Pets, grant you a pet resource whenever a city is placed, and grants victory points at the end of the game based on how many pets you have. Many other cards grant positive or negative point values at the end of the game simply for being in your play area. Beyond that, the board offers a set of standard projects you can always use if you have the money. Standard projects add an additional layer of decision making while also ensuring that you rarely get locked out of a turn from a poor card draw. Many cards or actions let you place different tiles on Mars. This has a large impact because in addition to greenery tiles providing oxygen and oceans serving as a key part of a life-sustaining ecosystem, you also earn bonuses and points for placing them. Greenery tiles contribute victory points at the end, while cities grant additional points for having greenery tiles next to them. Additionally, several spaces on the board grant you resources or cards for simply placing a tile there, and these combinations of factors make the board a hot commodity. Players often vie for certain layouts for the most points, but care must be given to avoid giving another player free reign to plop a city down in the middle of their greenery tiles. Plus, a number of special tiles can be placed using certain cards. Some of them exist simply to take up space, while others offer unique bonuses. Terraforming Mars' mixture of card play, engine building, and tile placement make the game a multifaceted affair where no aspect feels tacked on. Its mechanisms are cohesive and give you numerous options to pursue the strategies of your choice, and that makes the game very fun to play. Milestones and awards are clever mechanisms that force players to adapt in both the long and short term. No one player is capable of fulfilling the requirements for all of them, but only three of each can be claimed in each game. This places a unique kind of pressure on everyone playing, regardless of personal strategy. Milestones cost an action and money to fund, but are claimed by the person funding them if they meet the requirements. For example, you need three cities for mayor, or three greenery tiles for gardener. Awards, on the other hand, aren't checked until the end of the game. Only the awards that are funded, though, are checked at all, and it doesn't matter who funded them. For example, I could fund scientists if I'm confident that I'll have the most science tags at the end of the game. But if someone else manages to acquire more science tags than me, they receive the first place reward and I'll get second. It places an interesting dynamic between the players. Funding an award late sounds like the best move, but they go up in price for each one funded. There can only be three funded awards, so if you wait too long, you may be locked out of the one you want. Yet if an award is funded early, everyone can see it and plan to take it. In my last game, I even funded an award I knew I couldn't win. But only one award slot was open, and there were two awards I knew another player would have locked down if she claimed them, so I claimed a different one first that I knew I'd come in second on for a couple of points instead of none. That kind of thinking really adds to the game. Some of the cards in Terraforming Mars allows you to directly affect another player, such as stealing a small amount of money or steel with hired raiders, or by dropping a big asteroid on their precious plants. The issue is, the game really doesn't go far enough with it. Most aggressive cards are a nuisance at best and rarely, if ever, slow down another player to a meaningful degree that's truly worth the cost. It's problematic for a few reasons, but I know some argue that attacking players doesn't fit the theme of the game. I disagree. You're playing greedy corporations that will use concepts such as indentured workers, hired raiders, and literal sabotage to get ahead. It's already baked into the theme, it's just fairly toothless. It's the one aspect of Terraforming Mars that feels underdeveloped. It feels like you're truly meant to be able to be more aggressive to stall opposing players' progress. There are times that a player can get certain combos of cards in play that it's clear that they're going to win. When it happens, there's really nothing you can do about it, yet you will still have an hour or more of game time ahead of you with no way to slow that player's powerful engine of combos. That engine is only going to gain more and more steam with every turn. 
A lot of players don't like Take That mechanisms, and plenty of Terraforming Mars players will actually remove the aggressive cards that do exist, so I understand the reasoning, but I do feel it impacts the game in a negative way. Terraforming Mars is a long game, so a total blowout that you're powerless to stop feels really bad. I've played a lot of Terraforming Mars and at all player counts. The game works great from player counts 2 to 5, and is pretty much the same game at any of them with a couple of exceptions. The more players there are, the faster the parameters increase since they don't change with the player count, so while a game may last longer with more players, you have fewer rounds before the end. This isn't a problem, you just need to adapt your strategies to account for fewer rounds with more players and more rounds with fewer players. There is a solo mode too, and it's a neat little replayable puzzle, but it's a much different game. When playing alone, the game ends in 14 rounds, and you are challenged with fully terraforming the planet before then. It's an interesting mental exercise, but I found it hard to enjoy simply because it's clearly tacked on. A good portion of the cards, I'd say roughly half, are dead cards when playing alone. The only thing that matters is terraforming, so many cards meant to earn points or pay off in later rounds just serve to clog the deck instead. That also makes the solo mode feel much more luck reliant. You aren't buying cards out of a 4 card hand as much as you're buying any card that actually works in solo play out of a 4 card hand. One of my criteria for buying a game is I have to believe it works well alone or with one other person. I wouldn't recommend Terraforming Mars as a solo game, but it does thankfully play great at 2 players, in addition to 3, 4, and 5. It's difficult to convey what makes Terraforming Mars so great, because it's not any single mechanism that sells the experience. It's a large number of them that blend together seamlessly which elevates the fun factor. Every turn is interesting and full of player agency. There's no set path to victory and no two games truly feel the same. It's a wonderful mix of resource management, risk assessment, and planning, and the fact that every card is unique makes every draw exciting, plus 17 unique corporations that all work differently. The strategic decision space is just so wide, featuring several elements that never feel overwhelming thanks to their elegant design. It mixes tile placement, engine building, and hand management beautifully, and despite all of its moving parts, it's fairly easy to learn thanks to the symbiotic nature between its roles, setting, and theme. The rulebook is not great though, so if you're the game teacher of the group, you may want to watch a video. The components are going to come down to taste. I like them, although I wish the cards were thicker. But you do get a ton of them in the box. But the box comes with something much less tangible, but just as important. A game with no shelf life. Terraforming Mars just doesn't get old. You can play it over and over and every game feels fresh and fun. I think the fact that the aggressive cards don't go far enough is a massive misstep, especially in the absence of a catch-up mechanic in a game that can easily take over two hours to play. However, an ecosystem is never truly perfect. It's just a bunch of variables tuned and twisted in the right way that life found a way. Imperfect it may be, but there's great beauty in its existence. Terraforming Mars receives my Golden Shield Award for being the right combination of variables, tweaked and tuned in just the right way. Terraforming Mars is a game that can look and sound incredibly dull to play. The first time I opened the box, I thought it looked more like work than fun. The first time I taught my group how to play it, they looked as if I was about to have them count grains of rice for the next three hours. It turned out to be such a hit, however, that they offered to split the cost for all of the expansions, and it entered my own personal top 5 favorite games. One of my side projects is to create a homebrew expansion that focuses on addressing the lack of aggression in Terraforming Mars, as it's something my entire group desires. I play a lot of games, and I don't have a lot of time. The fact that I want to devote the energy to address something I felt was a flaw speaks to how great the game actually is. What makes Terraforming Mars even more special is the fact that many of you will disagree with me about whether or not the lack of aggression is a flaw. If you aren't a fan of Take That Mechanisms, it's an even better fit for your table. The bottom line is, the game is simply fantastic, and has definitely earned its rank on Board Game Geek. Keep an eye on my Patreon for updates on progress of my little homebrew side project, and stay tuned for more reviews and content related to Terraforming Mars. To recap, the pros. 
Terraforming Mars has over 200 unique cards. It has 17 unique corporations. Its mechanisms meld with the theme, the actions you take make logical sense. The game is wide open with strategy, with many paths to victory. It has subtle, but meaningful player interaction between drafting, tile placement, and awards. Building an engine is satisfying and opens up more and more actions as the game progresses. The milestone and awards system put a brilliant type of pressure on the players. The fact that you get monetary benefits for TR makes the points worth more than just victory at the end, and having to choose which cards to buy from a hand of four each round deepens the game's strategic strength. The Cons The cards are pretty thin and the cubes have nicks at the corners. While the game features some take that elements, it's fangless and doesn't go far enough. A player can snowball to the point that victory is certain, even with an hour or more left to play. It's very easy to knock your cubes from your player board, resulting in frustration and confusion. The rulebook is obtuse, and the solo mode is a letdown. Who would like Terraforming Mars? If you want a game where you can see your long-term strategies unfold, yet still need to adapt turn from turn. If you want a deep, long game. If you want something highly replayable with a lot of variety. If you like the idea of building a production engine to fund your plans. If you like games that mix mechanisms, Terraforming Mars has several common ones that work cohesively. If you want a game with subtle player interaction, most actions in Terraforming Mars affect other players indirectly. Terraforming Mars is a great pick if you're looking for a game that works great at player counts 2 to 5. If you enjoy games such as Underwater Cities, Furnace, or Race for the Galaxy, you'll probably like Terraforming Mars. Who wouldn't like Terraforming Mars? If you want a short game, Terraforming Mars can last between 2 to 3 hours. If you want a game with high player interaction, Terraforming Mars is fairly subtle. Gamers with a severe disdain for Take That mechanism should take note that Terraforming Mars does have a limited number of cards that target other players. If you want a great solo experience, there are better choices. There's no catch-up mechanism. While not terribly common, the game can be decided with an hour or more left to play. If that sounds awful, the game might not be a great choice. All of that is Terraforming Mars. Thanks for watching my review. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking or subscribing. It helps me out a great deal and really boosts my visibility on YouTube. I've also left several links down in the description below, including two links to our brand new Patreon and Discord. You can join the Discord, hang out, and talk about games, or if you become a Patreon, you get a few exclusive benefits, such as being listed along our thank you wall or at the end of videos, exclusive roles in the Discord, access to homebrew documents, and exclusive polls. Of course, there's also a link to my website where you can find the bulk of my written content. In any case, thanks for watching, and until next time.